Today's topic is about nutritional importance of protein. Previously, we have seen that importance of carbohydrate and lipid. Now, protein that is the most important part of our nutrition. So, in this detail, first that is about the essential amino acid, but before that, about the protein. So, protein forms the building block of the body tissue. Simple, our muscle mass is basically made up of the protein, and that is protein is made up of the amino acid. So, only 10 to 20 percent of the total energy is derived from the protein. So, our body is taking this amino acid or protein for the making of body tissue, not for the energy purpose. Only few amount of energy is derived from the protein. So, when enough carbohydrate are present in the diet the amino acid are not used for yielding energy body is keeping this protein for making of a tissue body tissue or the different important protein not for the energy purpose so this is known as a protein sparing effect of carbohydrate so till sufficient carbohydrate and fat is present body will not utilize protein for the energy purpose but during scarcity or during starvation when exhaust of that carbohydrate and lipid during that time amino acid will further utilize for the energy purpose or energy source so protein are the only source of essential amino acid now this protein is basically made up of the 20 amino acid this 20 amino acid based on the nutritional importance it is divided in a three category essential non-essential and semi-essential total eight amino acid are purely essential which are not synthesized in our body while two are the semi-essential where the these two particular amino acid are requirement is increased during growing age while for the non-essential amino acid which can be easily synthesized inside the body so even it is not provided body will synthesize that non-essential amino acid so as per the who recommendation the safe level of protein intake for an adult is 0.75 2.8 gram per kilogram per day so on daily basis you have to take this protein on your depending on your body weight so suppose it is we are saying that roughly 1 gram per kilogram so if your body weight is about 60 kg then you have to take 60 gram of protein per day now these are the main sources for the protein so this milk and milk product fish and non-vegetarian diet as well as egg and vegetables particularly that pulses is a good source of protein for the vegetarians for the importance so for the synthesis of body protein all the essential amino acids should be supplied in adequate quantity in the diet so simple whenever the protein is synthesized during that protein synthesis all the amino acid essential non-essential semi-essential all is needed but sometime what happens cysteine and tyrosine can be synthesized from methionine and phenylalanine so thus requirement of the precursor amino acid is determined by the availability of the product suppose that cysteine and tyrosine is not there then requirement of methionine and phenylalanine is further increased so all amino acid is needed for different protein formation so remaining amino acid can be synthesized so particularly non-essential amino acid provided there is a enough supply of protein in total so all amino acid is provided sufficiently and everything is there then protein will be synthesized without problem now only three amino acid are truly dispensable these are the alanine aspartate and glutamate alanine simply synthesized from the pyruvate aspartate is closely related with the oxaloacetate and glutamate related with the alpha ketoglutarate these three pyruvate oxaloacetate alpha ketoglutarate that is simply produced in a tca cycle as well as glycolysis and that can be interconverted correspondingly for the amino acid so these precursors are generally available in plenty so these are considered dispensable because we can easily dispense it and because the production is very easy inside the body now whenever we are learning this protein so we have to understand this protein in the relation of nitrogen because nitrogen that is only present in the protein so we have learned about the carbohydrate lipid and protein out of these three chemical formulation of these three macromolecule only protein having a nitrogen in the amino group nh2 now a normal healthy adult is said to be in nitrogen balance because the dietary intake that is i equal the daily loss through the urine feces and skin so whatever the nitrogen intake that should be balanced with the loss of the nitrogen this loss is mostly occurring only in these three form either in the urine in feces or in the skin in the urine mostly that creatinine and urea that is containing good amount of nitrogen feces and skin in the skin sometime outer layer of the skin are losses unknowingly and that is also containing some amount of the nitrogen so intake should be equivalent to the 
loss in the urine feces and skin apart from that for the normal development also we needed protein so when the excretion excess intake it is called as a negative nitrogen balance but when the intake exceed excretion it is state of a positive nitrogen balance so two state you have to remember either positive if more protein is taken as compared to the loss negative nitrogen balance means loss of the protein is more as compared to the intake so nitrogen balance can be actually measured by calculating the dietary intake of protein nitrogen that is 16 percentage of the weight of the nitrogen so whenever you are taking that 100 gram of protein is equal to 16 gram of the nitrogen and measuring the daily excretion so that is giving nitrogen balance so some factor which are affecting this nitrogen balance so you have to remember growth during that time positive nitrogen balance hormone in that two type of hormone growth hormone insulin and androgen promote positive nitrogen balance while corticosteroid causing a negative nitrogen balance pregnancy during that time growth and development so positive nitrogen balance due to the growth of the fetus convulsions a person convulsing after an illness or surgery will be in a positive nitrogen balance simple recovery during recovery phase tissue is regenerating and so regeneration of tissue definitely it is creating positive nitrogen balance so due to active regeneration of the tissue now oppositely acute illness negative nitrogen balance is seen in subject to immediately after surgery trauma and burns so in trauma or burns what about tissue loss or tissue injury and during that time loss of tissue that is creating loss of the nitrogen for the chronic illness malignancy uncontrolled diabetes mellitus and other long disease so negative nitrogen balance and one more protein deficiency simple protein is not available or protein deficiency lead to a negative nitrogen balance even a single amino acid that is also creating negative nitrogen balance simple prolonged starvation so here intake is minimal or no intake so that is definitely creating simple loss there is a daily basis urine feces and skin loss is continue but intake is not there so it is creating again negative nitrogen balance so you have to remember about this nitrogen balance growth hormone pregnancy and convulsions that is creating positive nitrogen balance while acute illness chronic illness and protein deficiency will create negative nitrogen balance now maintenance so one has to satisfy the need for nitrogen intake which are obligatory nitrogen loss so on daily basis nitrogen loss is about 3.5 gram so for a 65 kg person that loss in the urinary fecal and skin loss so this could be equivalent to 22 gram of protein because nitrogen that is just 16 percent of the total protein so requirement for protein turnover the minimum daily requirement to compensate for the above two category particular unknowingly loss and knowing loss that compensation by both the way should be 0 0.75 to 0 0.8 gram per kilogram body weight of good quality protein now protein requirement is for the growth so this is applicable growth is during that which physiological condition mostly in infancy children adults pregnancy lactation as well as in during recovery phase from the illness during that time active growth phase is there and more requirement of protein is found further as growth stop once that growth or recovery is completed or any physiological condition is over protein requirement is also decreases so here depending on the different age category a different condition the recommendation recommended protein allowance is given so for the infant that is 2.4 gram per kilogram body weight per day for the children up to 10 years 1.75 gram per kilogram body weight per day so adults can boys and girls 1.6 gram and 1.4 gram per kilogram on daily basis for the for the adult when growth is over requirement of protein is decreased so for the adult men and women that is just 0.8 gram per kilogram on daily basis while two particular condition pregnancy 2 gram per kilogram and lactation 2.5 gram per kilogram on daily basis so during infancy and lactation highest amount is of protein is needed and during pregnancy also good amount of protein is needed so that can provide a proper growth of the body further simply this intake is of this protein and utilization as well as excretion of protein is explained in this picture absorption from where what are the diet we are taking different kind of protein so that diet and what are this diet containing protein is metabolized up to the amino acid level so amino acid creating amino acid pool and that is also called a nitrogen pool now this nitrogen pool 
these amino acid will be utilized for the body protein formation and that is called anabolism same way on daily basis some protein are catabolized or they will be degraded that catabolism that will also generate amino acid and generally amino acid are not lost so on major or bulk portion so mostly that catabolism amino acid generated that can be also sometime utilized for the again this body protein formation to conserve that amino acid but out of that amino acid pool on daily basis some amino acid are lost through the skin hair and sweat as well as urinary nitrogen loss particularly urea and creatinine and feces so during in the on daily basis that skin urine and feces these are the main three phase where the protein or nitrogen is lost so simple hair falling that in the hair good amount of the cysteine amino acid is there in urine urea and creatinine that is containing good amount of the nitrogen and feces whatever the unabsorbed and some excretion of protein so that all will be lost in the feces so these three are the main root of the loss of the nitrogen so certain protein are deficient in one or more essential amino acid and this amino acid if this particular protein is fed as the only source of protein growth will be affected so simple whenever we are taking any protein that protein should be a complete protein means containing all the essential amino acid if any one amino acid means essential amino acid is not there then it will create a incomplete protein or incomplete protein cannot lead to a proper growth so our growth will be affected this amino acid is said to be a limiting amino acid so this limiting amino acid is that which limits the weight gain when that particular protein is supplied to an animal now this limiting amino acid can be compensated by the mutual supplement there is a only few protein are considered a complete protein so this problem of limiting amino acid may be overcome by taking a mixture of protein in the diet so mutual supplementation of protein is thus achieved for example pulses are deficient in methionine so pulses is a good source of protein even though it is leaking of a methionine but rich in the lysine amino acid on the other hand cereals which is also a major bulk of our diet means wheat and rice are deficient in lysine but rich in the methionine so pulses lack in methionine cereals lack in lysine but pulses containing lysine and cereals containing methionine so if you combine these two pulse and cereals so therefore a combination of pulses plus cereal is a creating very good combination or mutual supplementation simple in north indian mostly that roti that is a representation of wheat so wheat and pulses are predominantly taken while in the south indian rice that is also a important cereals of the south indian diet so this creating a very good mutual supplementation so dal chapati plus rice and dal will cancel each other's deficiency and become equivalent to the first class protein now here a graph is shown on daily basis suppose a simple cereals are given then growth or weight will be lost on gradual basis only pulses is given then also growth will not be maintained but if combination of cereals and pulses is given that is providing a proper growth and weight maintenance is possible further here some example for protein limiting amino acid and its sub replacement is given so rice which is lack of the lysine and threonine so that should be compensated by the pulses same way wheat is also co compensated by the pulses Uh, further that is gelatin that is lack of the tryptophan so that should be compensated by the milk protein again that jain this particular protein present in the maize or the corn so that is again tryptophan and lysine lacking in jain and that should be compensated by the milk further this tapioca which is lacking of this phenylalanine tyrosine aromatic amino acid so it can be compensated by the fish protein bengal gram so that is lacking of this cysteine and methionine could be compensated by the cereals further that all this combination is giving a best mutual supplementation so that's all about the basic importance of protein in our diet